Hey, how's everybody doing? Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. It is two o'clock and it is time for episode number 211 of our button show. What does this button do? It's an educational show about smartphones and technology with us geeks on tour. Yeah. So we have a, uh, a couple of things going on today. We're going to do a hodgepodge, and we do remind you, if you'd like, to uh, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell, do all that stuff. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and, and like us there. We have a hodgepodge of tech tech tips. <laughs> say that three times. Easy for you to say. <laughs> all right. And uh, we're going to start off with this real quick one here. And yes, I know somebody in our audience was, was here when we took this. So I'm curious if you remember it, David. This is a an example of what you can use the Google Lens for. Just see a product, take a picture, find out how to buy it. So at a recent RV rally, somebody got out this sweet little gadget to show us and said that it was a bug zapper, a mosquito zapper, as well as a light, and it was easy to hang. We wanted to know how to get one. Took a picture of it, you view the picture using Google Photos, and then this little button right here is the lens button, and it will scan the photo it sees, and it will tell you what it is, and even where to buy it. You can just open up a browser, takes me to Walmart, where I can see a lot more information about it and buy it. <laughs> yeah? That was a real quick one. <laughs> but I think that's important to show just how easy it is. Yeah. See something you like? Take a picture of it. Open it up in Google Photos and tap the lens button, and you can find out what it is and where to buy it. Way to go. All right. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to our studio in beautiful, sunny South Florida. This is Fort Lauderdale by the sea, and we're happy to be here. <laughs> Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your Android or your iPhone or your app, iPad or any of these technological marvels? How do you learn about them? Well, we are geeks who teach. Another word for geek is a propeller head. Thus, <laughs> thus these silly hats. They've been our signature for many years. Mm -hmm. But we are geeks who teach. And I believe that the best way to learn is in bite-sized pieces on a regular basis. So we just come up with different topics and do this, do this show. And we learn as we go. And you can too. So what are we doing now, Chris? We're, we're still home and getting, <laughs> we will actually be traveling this summer. So there will, hopefully we'll get to do a few shows where we're, On where we road? won't say that we're home, but we are still home, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And we've been busy. Yeah, it's been good though. Seems like, seems like I've been real busy. There's just the list. And I've started making a web page that keeps track of all these online classes. And when possible, anybody can look at the material and maybe even watch the recording of the whole class. So check it out on our web page, geeksontour.com. Scroll down just a little bit and you'll see a column labeled classes. And all those are under there. So we've given four so far in April. And coming up this Wednesday, we are going to be the featured guests on Dototech talking about Google Photos and what changes there are for 2021. Pretty cool. And if you would like to register for that, all you need to do is scan that QR code that's showing on the screen right now. Or if, if you don't know how to scan, hold on. That's going to be our first tip. Or you can just snap a photo of your screen and we'll be showing you how you can read a QR code from the photo. All right. We want to say hi to uh, a bunch of our regular viewers. Let's see. Who do we have out there? 
Jalen says she's already signed up for the Dotto Tech thing. <laughs> okay, Ron Brown was in first, and uh, he says we're going to be there. Well, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Oh, congratulations on getting your COVID shot. Yeah. Good Dazzle, deal. Dazzle and Debbie Diver. Hey, Debbie. Very good cool. to see you. Yeah. Good um, yeah, Karen watching Gone with the Winds. We love those guys. That's... Mm -hmm. All right, John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. South Carolina. Dave, Dave Gottdiner. Yeah. Did you recognize that? That yeah. was at at your road trek rally last That's fall right. where i made that little video from okay sugarland texas what is that i don't know i don't know either <laughs> all right i think we're there who doesn't love a good hodgepodge <laughs> yes Dallin. all right I, I think these are some of our more fun fun shows when we just throw a bunch of things together yeah it can be a lot of fun I think I've gotten most of them. Linda Bullerman says, I don't have a lens button. We will talk about that, how, and, how you and, get one. And how you get it. I bet she's on an Apple iPhone. What do you think? All right. Well, thank you for all of our, to all of our premium members. You're the ones that make this possible. We are member supported. And we hope that you like this and will join, become a member too. All you have to do is go to geeksontour.com and you'll see a button to become a member. It's like 60 bucks a year. And after this button show, right after this, in about an hour, we'll have an online Zoom meeting with our premium members. That's one of the benefits of membership. And Chris sends out a link and an email to our members. Or if you are, uh, if you can't find that, you can go to our website, geeksontour.com and go to the member login menu item and you'll find it there. So a lot of these tips come from our newsletter, and we do invite you to sign up for that newsletter. And if you notice, really big and prominent on this particular slide, there is a QR code. So you can just scan that. And this is I'm, this is starting now. So oh, okay. This is part of the class, is this <laughs> scanning a QR code for the newsletter. You don't need any kind of special app. Just pick up your phone, open the camera, and you don't take, you don't have to take a picture of it. You can, that's something else, but just focus on that QR code that's on the screen and your camera should pop up a message saying, you know, tap here to go to the web page represented by that QR code. And so if, if you do that, yeah, I'd like to see in the comments how many people are able to do that right now. Just open your camera, point it at the screen, focus on that QR code, and then tap on the message that pops up. And it takes you to where you can put in your name and email for our newsletter. Now, if it didn't, next <laughs> slide. If it didn't. So tell us if that worked for any of you guys. But if it didn't, then either you have an older phone or you don't have the settings set right. All iPhones, I believe, all, all iPhones except for the very earliest models, this should work great unless somebody has changed the setting. So I want to show you. I want to show you that. There's a setting on the iPhone and there's a setting on the Android that makes the camera capable of scanning QR codes. iPhone first. And on the iPhone, it's in the main system settings. And then you find camera. And it's a ways down here. You find camera and open that up. And there's the option right there, scan QR codes. If that is off on yours, then what I just suggested that you do by scanning the QR code won't work. It needs to be on, and then your camera is a QR code scanner. On Android, same idea, just in a different place.
on an Android, you don't go to the system settings. You actually open the camera and go to the camera settings, which is this little gear right there. And same thing. There's an option for scan QR codes. If that's off, then what I just asked you to do wouldn't work. So make sure that's on if you want your camera to scan QR codes. All right. Next slide. Okay. So that's that's how to do that. But then let's say you didn't feel like filling out that form now. You didn't want to just scan it live and do it right now, but you'd like to have it available for later. That is how that is why you would take a picture of the screen. And here's a little video that explains how you could use Google Photos to scan it later. So it has to do about uh, QR codes. Uh, QR codes, you know, are those funny looking square things. And we have done a show, on, a couple of shows on them before, episode 146 and episode 102. Both of those taught about scanning QR codes immediately and about making your own QR codes. But what if you don't have time to scan and see the results right away? Here's my example. See that sign? It's was a billboard at a Civil War park that we were at in Mississippi somewhere oh, a God. while ago. If you say so. <laughs> and if you look closely, there's a QR code on it. And it says, scan this QR code to watch a video of the reenactment of the war of the battle that took place here at Railroad Redoubt. Well, I took a, instead of scanning it and watching the video while we're standing there in the hot sun, I just took a photo of that. And then using Google Photos and that little button there with the two dots in the middle is called Lens. So let me show you how that works. So this is my, this works the same on an iPhone or an Android. This happens to be my Android and because it's Google Photos. So Google Photos works the same. So I go to Google Photos. And I'll bet you I can find that picture by searching for QR code. <laughs> all right. So here are all the pictures that came up with QR code. And there is that one of the Civil War battlefield with that QR code right here. So the button I'm talking about is this third button on the bottom. And it's called Google Lens. I tap it and it just starts investigating the, what's in front of it. And look at that right there. It pops up and says, oh, I see a code here that will take you to YouTube. Is that what you want to do? Below you are the tracks of what historically wow. was known as the Southern Railroad of Mississippi. This rail line, which connected Vicksburg to Jackson, yes. and via Jackson points elsewhere in the... Ah. Pretty cool, huh? Way cool. Uh, there's, I have a QR code on here that... You don't need to get out your phone and scan it right now, but just snap a picture of it. And if you have Google Photos, you can scan it later. And this QR code will give you the form that you can sign up for our free newsletters and get your weekly tech tip. Okay, we're back. Okay. And I did see a couple of questions there. Ron says that his Pixel 3 doesn't have it. We just checked with Jim's Pixel 4. Pixel 4 XL, and it works just fine. And yeah. it does, so I am surprised. Not sure. So if, if it does not work on your device just with the camera, then, then the Google Photos <laughs> is probably the best option. Right. Everybody uses Google Photos, right? And if you don't, you should. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you would need to download a QR code scanner. There's there's a bunch of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of them. That's, that's easy to do. But for most phones these days, you don't need to. You just use the camera. Okay. While we're on QR codes, I just want you to know how you can make your own. With the latest update 
to Chrome, although I see it's on other web browsers too. So it's not just Chrome. It's one click easy to make a QR code of any web page. And let me show you that. Okay. So let's say that you want you, you go to a web page on geeksontour.com. I told you here's geeksontour.com and here is that classes, that new classes page I've been making. And you see that there are class materials on editing photos with Snapseed. You would like to learn more about Snapseed. Let's take a look at those class materials. And this, so notice up in the address bar now, that's a pretty long address bar you're gonna be hard pressed to remember that for future or to tell somebody else. But look at this. All you have to do is click up on that address bar and this little square icon appears, which means make me a QR code of this page. Just click that and there's your QR code. You can download it. You can you know, take a screenshot of it. You can just read it on the screen right now. So that's, and that, I have found that that works with the Edge browser and you said on the Safari browser as well? Correct. So yeah. all you do is click in the address bar and make a QR code. And it really is handy. <laughs> oh, I have been using it so much. The only thing I don't like, I don't, I don't particularly care for that little dinosaur in the middle. Well, that's true. <laughs> there are other ways to make QR codes, but nothing is as easy as this. Nothing is as so easy, right? I've seen anyway. I okay. use a program called QR Droid on my Android phone. And I and with that, I can put our Geeks on Tour logo in the middle rather than that dinosaur. But this is a lot easier. Yeah, it is. Okay. So any any questions? Okay, just oh. got here. Is any of this for iPhone? Yes, yes, we did do iPhone. You, the camera on your iPhone should be able to scan a QR code. We do both iPhones, iDevices, iOS, and, and Android. And web. And Chromebooks <laughs> and Chromebooks, all that stuff. Yep, yep. So yeah, just, just try and we'll uh, notify you if it's specially on one or the other, but we won't do everything on both that's right, just right. that's just too too much okay right. so a couple of random hodgepodge tips and then we will get more into into google lens you should be at stop the ringing more 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 there we go okay here <laughs> is one of our just very favorite tips because it's so easy and a lot of people don't don't know about it so it is stop the ringing. You're in a theater or you're in a seminar and your phone starts ringing and you freak out and you're fumbling in your purse and you get it out and you figure you have to find it, open it and hang it up. No, you don't. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call Jim. Can you show my phone? Yeah, I can. <laughs> so, and I have this cute little shortcut here. I can just tap that and call Jim. And his phone will start ringing in a minute. What's that noise? Ah, <laughs> shut that up. All I have to do is squeeze it. All I did there is squeeze the thing, the phone, and I touched one of the buttons on there. I think I may have hit the volume button when I did that. And whenever you hit one of the buttons on most of these devices, it will silence the ringer. But the phone call is still going on. I could actually take the call still because it is going on there. Or I could hang up. But at least the noise is stopped. And that is what we really wanted to do is stop the ringing. Any, any of those buttons will, will do the trick. Yeah, volume up, volume down, or power button. But I think it, but it's just really good to know you don't have to hang up. 
on them. You know? <laughs> Just stop the ringing and then you can walk outside and still take the call if you need to or let it go and it goes to voicemail. So that is hodgepodge tip number one. Hodgepodge tip number two is how did I get that? And, and that works for iPhone too, by the way. That's most any phone I've ever helped anybody with, that works. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as there are physical buttons on the sides, volume and power, that, that works. So how did I get that cute little widget of calling Jim on my homepage? Wasn't that nice? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like, so home screen widgets. And this, both iPhone and Android have home screen widgets, but I, I find the ones on the Android are more useful. And this particular one is, is Android. So you can add a contact person right to your home screen and quickly be able to call or text them. So I'm going to remove this button first. Okay. So that and then put it back and you see how I did it. So if I long press on it, I get these options and remove from home. All right, how do I make a widget? Long press on any empty area of the home screen and that will, empty area, that wasn't empty. <laughs> so long press on an empty area and things should pop up. This is a Samsung, but most Androids work something like this. And there's widgets. So the widget that I want is contacts. There's a bunch of them, but here is contacts. And I want just the contact. I want to be able to dial or message. So I'm going to choose this one. It says touch and hold a widget to move it. And I'll put it right back there where it was. And it says, okay, what contact do you want this to be? And I will search for Jim. And there we go. There is my contact back. So that was long press on a blank area and then tap on widgets. On the iPhone, it's basically the same idea. You long press on a blank area but then that you tap the little plus in the upper right hand corner and that's how you can get widgets. So all sorts of widgets here, but the contact was not one of them. And that's one that I just really like. <laughs> so that was home screen widgets. Next, I think one, one more kind of hodgepodge tip and then, and then we will get to lens. This also has to do with home screen. Let's say that you go to Geeks On Tour all the time, right? I do. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> Rather than have to open up a browser and type in Geeks On Tour, you want a button right on your home screen. Step one, and I'll, I'll start with the, uh, with the iPhone here. I'll do it on, that, this I will do on both. So this is the iPhone. Step one is to open up your browser. On the iPhone, I use Chrome, but I will use Safari for this. So I open up Safari. <laughs> I go to geeksontour.com, which happens to be what was there. I tap the share button, that square with the up arrow, and then scroll down and you'll see add to home screen. And add. So there is Geeks On Tour with, you can tell because it has the little propeller hat on it. All I now have to do anytime I wanna go to Geeks On Tour is tap that button and I'm there. On Android, really the same thing, but I'm gonna open Chrome and then go to where you wanna go geeksontour.com and instead of the share button you tap on the three dots and you find add to home screen and you can make it say whatever you want 
you know, I don't need all those words. I just want it to say geeksontour.com. Add to home screen. And there it is. And all that instructions is right on the screen there. Okay. Any questions? I suppose there probably are. Let's take a look through here. Let's see, my previous Moto did not have it, but I recently bought a Moto G and it has lens. John wants to know, does lens work on the web version of Google Photos? No. No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is a problem. My phone and it's Dabbler 2 can be too old. But if you have Google Photos on your phone or tablet, that should work. And we'll show you how that works here in a few minutes. Hi, Chloe. No Pixel 2, huh? Hmm, no scanning QR code. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Dave's got it for the iPhone. I have lens on my Pixel 2, but he had to enable it. Okay. Jalen? Okay. Not working in the Firefox browser. Well, it might be a switch that you need to turn on. Firefox tends to be a little bit heavy on the, on the technical side of things. It's a very secure browser and it has a lot of features and there may be a setting in there that, that needs to be changed. You see anything else there that I missed? Nope. I probably did, but <laughs> there's a big list of them here. Okay. So what is Google Lens? Imagine if you would that you had this magic magnifying glass that you could go throughout your day and just look at things with that magic magnifying glass and be able to Google it. That's what Google Lens is. So as you're looking around, let's say you might see a traffic sign that's in a language that you don't understand. So you would just point your magic lens at it and say, what's the, translate that for me. You see a beautiful flower. What is that flower? You see a product that you want. What, what is that and where can I buy it? You see a business card and you can say, hey, please call that phone number. You don't have to dial anything. That's what Google Lens is all about. It's Googling the real world. Next. So how do you access it? And here it's slightly different on iPhone and Android. Google Photos works the same on both though. So first I wanna show you on iPhone. On iPhone, you just use the Google search app, that G. You know, so it's, it's just the Google search app, the G. And yeah, there's you know, the bar that where you would type Type in something, look, look at the right-hand side. That is the Google Lens button, that square with the dot in the middle, it's supposed to look like a camera lens. That is how you access Google Lens on the iPhone. Once you access it, it works exactly the same. So I'm gonna be demoing on the, on the Android because I'll be able to show you my screen. On the Android, you need to install the separate app called Lens. I don't, I don't know quite why, but the Google search doesn't have Lens on it. You need the separate app. So you get it in the Play Store, or it might already be installed in your Google group of apps. It was installed in my Google group, yeah. So, so that is the Google Lens button, standalone app. So I'm going to give a, a few examples here. I, I bought this plant and it's sorry, green. It's green. So it disappears <laughs> on our green screen technology, but I <coughs> to see how I should plant that. Does it need sun or shade or there anything else that I need to know? So I just tap 
the Google Lens button. Oh, wait. <laughs> Show that again, and then I can go back to it. Tap the Google Lens button. I just tap the Google Lens button, and now I just point my phone at the plant. And notice when a blue dot appears, that's telling you, okay, I, I got it. What do you want to do? And I'll just tap the little search button. And it tells me what that plant is. And hopefully I can find one, one of these will tell me the care. I'll just tap on the first one that popped up. And it said that they our house plant, which tells me, well, here, how to grow bromeliads. I can tap on that and find out more. And I've read through this before and learned that they don't need bright sun, which is good because our yard is very shaded. So that's, that is just pointing your phone with the lens app open at at a plant. Now, how about, let's say that you were at our house and we played this game. I love this game. I just think it's so much fun. <laughs> let's say that you really liked this game too. And you say, how do I get me one? Well, with Google Lens open, you just point, point at the thing that you want and search. And there you go. It's called catchphrase and you can get it at Amazon. You just, I just tapped where it said Amazon and have to tap, is it? And you can buy it for $39. Gee, I didn't think it was that much. <laughs> All right. So that's just pointing at something that you want to buy. So somebody has somebody has a hat or shoes or something that you say, "Ooh, I like those." Just lens it. Google it. <laughs> Google it. Google it. Another example of just pointing at something is we went out to a restaurant, an Italian restaurant. And there's some items on the menu that I didn't quite know what they were. So I'm going to use lens on that menu. I just, so there's Zuppa de Clams. And now it does say in English there, but what, what if it didn't? I can just tap where it says Zuppa de Clams and select the text. And not only does it tell me what it is, it gives me pictures and I can go and find recipes on, on how to make it. Another example though, that I really like, I went to China many years ago and I brought back a menu from a restaurant there. So watch, watch this. I go to Google Lens and there is something written in Chinese. And now at the bottom of the screen, notice where it's, it's, it still thinks that all I want to do is search. No, this time I want to translate. Notice that that's the first option on that bottom. And it does it like that. It, it just translates on the fly. Let's look at the heading up here. Chef's special introduction and street food is the name of the restaurant. Food street. Now this did have, <laughs> yeah, this does have English translation. So let's see, it says chef recommendations. And the translation was chef's special introduction. Yeah, not too bad. And let's see what this dish is down here. Rooted black pepper frog pot. I'm not sure how appetizing that sounds, but there it is, braised frog's legs. Mm -hmm. Frog pot. Yeah. So, <laughs> so a little bit to get used to. And you notice that 
using Google Lens live is a little tricky. So that's why I kind of like the picture method the best. My next example is a business card. Now, this business card, this is somebody that I might want to call again. So I don't want to just scan it now. I want to take a picture of it so that I can hold on to it and have it at any time. So I'm just going to take a picture of it using the camera, using the phone's camera. And I'll get it. Oops. Is that? Yeah. Good enough. I get the camera. Okay. And I've taken a picture of that card. Now, how do I look at the picture? Am I going to use Android Gallery or Apple Photos? I think you should use Google Photos. Ooh, right, <clears throat> right. This the lens button is only on Google Photos and on mobile devices. So here's the phone where I took the and this works on the iPhone too. I might show that. So I open up Google Photos right there. And <laughs> there's the business card I just took. Now I might want to rotate it. I'll do that with edit and crop and rotate and, and then make it a little bit brighter. Cool. Okay. And save. All right. So now the card looks a little bit better, but what do I want? I want to call this person lens button and watch this. <laughs> I just think this is so cool. You tap the lens button and then it says everything that it's seeing here, but all I want to do is make a phone call. I just tap where the number is and tap call. So is that cool or what? No, you can just call, but I have that card and I'm going to put that in an album with all the other business cards. I do that with the three dots at the top, add to album, and I have an album called Business Cards that hopefully isn't too far down here. And okay, so I'm gonna, well, there it is, Business Cards right there. So I have now added that card to Business Cards. And if I want to use it again sometime, I just go to library and find the Business Card album and it should be, oh, I have it set for alphabetizing. I need most recent photo and then business cards will come to the top. So here's all my business cards. At any point in time, I can just say, hey, I need to call my banker at uh, IBM Southeast Credit Union. I tap here, I tap lens and call, boom. I bet they're not open today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I could even just search for my banker's name, Jessica. And oh, I'm in I'm in my phone now. Sorry. Back to Google Photos and home search for Jessica. So Google Photos can search text in a picture. And if you take pictures of business cards, it will find names inside the business card. And then you want to call her, you just tap lens. How about I don't want to call her this time, I want to email her. It recognizes an email address in the card. And it's addressed an email to her. Now, where did all that start? <laughs> Just taking a picture of a business card. 
All right. Continuing on with using pictures in Google Photos, I have a bunch of examples. So I need to get back to Google Photos. And shall I do this on the iPhone now? Is that, will that help? I'll switch over to the iPhone just to show that it's exactly the same thing once you're in Google Photos. So this is my iPhone, but Google Photos has the same photos in it because it's my Google Photos. So just, just to prove that, I could search for Jessica here. And there's Jessica's business card. Tap Google Lens. And then I'll have to tap the phone number up here. There. Now, a little bit tricky. There we go. I got the phone number and now I can and now I can call. You have any any questions, comments? Probably. Already be installed in your Google. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, Roger got a new Android. We miss you too, man. Hurricane Wilson. Hey, Roger. Mm -hmm. So Mark Mark thinks that's cool. Translations. Wow. All right. Can an album in Google Photos be a home screen widget, such as a business card album? What a great idea. I don't think so, but great idea. <laughs> Write that down. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to play with, see if I can figure out a way to do that. That that would be cool. All right. Can you import a business card into contacts? Yes, I didn't point out, but when I tapped on, when I tapped on a lens on a business card, one of the options was add to contacts, you know? I didn't, I don't want these business cards in my contacts. So I just want to be able to find them and call when, when I want to. Does Google Lens give results based upon my interests? Huh. Uh, no, I don't think so because it's giving results based on what it's seeing. So you mean, does it, does it apply what it's seeing and your, I don't, I don't think so, hmm. but Hey, you know, who knows how things actually work in the in the bellies of Google? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lynn wants to know why you would use Google Lens instead of contacts. Well, I think that maybe a lot of times you don't really need a person in your contacts if it's just a, a business card that you don't need very often. It's a on the fly type thing. What do you think? I'm also very visual. I mean, I like getting people's business cards and I can see them as opposed to having to remember their business name or their name for, for my contacts. And yeah, most of these are just ones that I don't want messing up my contacts. You know, my contacts are more my personal friends. That's, that's just me, you know, but you can take a picture of a business card and add it to contacts. John wants to know, could you use the browser to go to the album and then use the add to home page as with other websites. Th that was my thought too, Jalen, but I still don't think so because albums don't have uh, set URLs. They're, they're dynamic URLs. Uh, so I don't think so, but that was where I was going to try also. Go ahead and try and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Google Photos always wants me to clear the cutter. Clutter. Clutter. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. For things like business cards. Can I turn that off? Um, I think you can turn off suggestions. It's in your it's in your settings. There's settings for what suggestions you want or don't. I just, you know, ignore it if and maybe I do want to clear the cl clutter. 
all that means is it's putting the business cards into your archive. And I do that manually myself. So when you're browsing through your beautiful photos of vacations and kayaking and, and more vacations, you don't see business cards in there. They're off in the archive, but when you bring up the album, they're all there. So it's, it's really not a bad idea. Can you make lens work on just a part of a photo? Just a part of a photo. Well, you can, yes, yes. You can zoom in, you can crop. So if it's not getting the part of it that you want, you can, you can zoom in and crop so that it's getting the part of the photo that you want. Yes. And then, and then uncrop or yes. go back if you, if you need that. Okay. This answered. Very good. After June, it'll cost to add them. <laughs> nah. Well, I mean, they, every photo that you upload to Google Photos will now count, but one photo, and I still recommend using the reduced quality, the hot, the setting called high quality, you're going to need to have 10,000 business cards before you will get past your 15 gigabytes of free space. So no, don't worry about that. Unless you're already full. Yeah. But, <laughs> There's that then. <laughs> but you can, you know, if you watched last week's show, I taught how you can make your Google Photos be at zero on June 1. And then you have the 15 shared gigabytes. Linda wants to know where you find your archived. Uh, under utilities and archive. You wanna show that? Okay, here. So under, well, library, sorry, library and archive. So here I, I do have a bunch of, I have ID cards on there. I don't want them showing up when I'm scrolling through. So Your photos. When I'm scrolling through my pretty photos. <laughs> now, if they're in the archive, they're still available for any albums that they're in and, and all of that. So they're just not in your main view when you're going through the library, right? Okay, let me. I have I have more examples. Oh, Lens boy. is so much fun, but now I'm just going to be doing it using the photos and using Google Photos. So other things that Lens can do. Yeah. Cool. So here's my example. Anybody recognize this place? Lots of RVers do, and all I know is that it's an arch. So it's probably in Utah because that is the land of arches but I don't know the name of this particular one. I tap the lens button. It analyzes it. It tells me that's the Corona arch. Good to know. Next example. I love this one. <laughs> if you've been following us for any length of time, you've seen this one before. Yeah, this is us at the Rialta Bridge in Venice on the Grand Canal. We were kayaking on the Grand Canal. I say, I don't remember the name of that bridge, though. I tap the lens button and. OK, so so here is this is telling me the Palazzo. It's the, on that building. It's telling me what that building is. So here is where I do want to focus in more on see if I can get it to tell me what the bridge is. Ah, Rialto Bridge. So do you see how I did that? There's a little button to, to zoom in, to, yeah, to zoom in and crop this one right here. And I could then specify what part of the photo I wanted it to concentrate on. Okay, next example. Let's say this was just a great view of some city. What city was it? <laughs> lens button and it tells me that that is union that's the kansas union city. station in kansas city we had a great visit there and next one is birds these are birds that you will see all over south florida what are they tap the lens button it investigates it tells me that's a florida sandhill crane sure enough <laughs> they're such cool birds and here, another 
kind of uniquely Florida. I don't know, they may exist other places, but Anhinga. That is an Anhinga. And it tells me that. And if I want to read more, you know, there this these are links to all sorts of articles and information. But if all you want to know is what is it, there you go. And then here, <laughs> these are some newcomers to our neighborhood. These ducks up here, I tap. Those are geese. Yep. Those are Egyptian geese. And Oops. very noisy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So see how the blue dot is hit right on one of those birds. And it tells me Egyptian goose. I mean, I can tell from the picture that that's the one it is. All right. Now, how about a shell? And that is a chambered nautilus. How about an underwater photo? Tap the lens button. And it tells me not only that that's a turtle, <laughs> I knew that, <laughs> it's a loggerhead turtle. How about a flower? Oh, Chloe's on this, and this was taken in Chloe, at Chloe's, Chloe's property. Uh, Google Lens, and that is a purple passion flower. So you're getting the idea. You can just, and this is a tree with weird fruit on it. And if I look through this a little bit, it's breadfruit. Now here's the one that we took at a Civil War park and there is a QR code there. Google Lens, tap the Q QR code and... Below you are the tracks of what historically was known as the Southern Railroad of Mississippi. This rail line, which connected Vicksburg <laughs> to Jackson... Shut up. And I'll try and stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, I just... Yeah, Google Lens is really, really powerful. There's that business card. Okay, now let's do a little bit of translating. I told you I went to China once many, many years ago and we were gonna be on our own. We had somebody write down for us the message that we needed to give the taxi driver. Please take us to the certain hotel. And it was written in Chinese. Google Lens and translate text and select that text, and it's a little too small here. And it says, please send me, please send me to the Park Hotel, thank you. Address, Chatham Road South. So it can even understand Chinese characters. And watch this, <laughs> Google Lens see if I can get it to do it this time and translate text and I tell it what text and uh, where there was a speak this last time I did this it would actually speak it oh I don't want translate I want it to speak it in Chinese so I select text and that, I'm selecting the Chinese text and, ah, hmm. Maybe it was on the Android only? I thought they were exactly the same. Anyway, it did speak in Chinese. It spoke those words that were written. I'll have to see if I can find that somewhere else because that was so cool. <laughs> And I think that's just about it. So maybe I will, oh, except for copying text. So here, here is a newspaper, an old newspaper clipping about my business in 1990s here in South Florida. And I could, let's say that I want to copy that text instead of giving it to somebody or spending the time and typing away, all you have to do is tap Google Lens and choose 
the text tool and select all. Look, that's a lot of text and copy text. Now, let me just prove to you that it really was copied. I'm just going to go to an email and I can paste, long press, paste, and there is that entire article from the newspaper clipping. And it's completely editable. It better be <laughs> because there's a lot of mistakes in it, but it's still a lot better. It's really not bad. Really not bad at all. Thanks, Jerry. We appreciate you. It will even do that for handwritten. So here I took a picture of a handwritten note, tap lens, select all text, and copy text, go to an email, and paste. And there is typewritten transcription of a handwritten note. Wow. Way cool. All right. And I think I'll end on that. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Ron says he used Google Lens to scan his COVID vaccination card. And it took him to the vaccination site because it probably has the logo of the Canadian vaccination website and it would do it there. It, it works that way on mine too. All right. Michael says, I have, if I have a picture of a group of people, I have photos of everyone in Google Photos from that group in photos. If I zoom lens, will it give me the name of that person as a result? Hmm. I, I, I don't know. I haven't tried it much with people because yeah, I usually get people somewhere you know, else <laughs> in other in other ways. I I kind of don't think so because Google Lens is finding this information, you know, unless it's a public figure. So that face would be identified somewhere on the web. I don't think it's looking at your I could be wrong though. I'm not sure there. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Maria says hi. And you also asked Maria if this would be up there later. Yes, you can follow the same links either on Facebook or YouTube to get to this recording. And yeah, that's great for genealogists. And I think I just heard the geese out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Oh, thank you, Richard. Okay. What a guy. All right. I got it. I, I just, I couldn't let you go without hearing that Google Lens could actually speak the Chinese. <laughs> so I just, I, I got it to work. I am on the Android here, so maybe it's something, but I don't think so. I just didn't do it right. I have that same Chinese note. I've selected, I've clicked on Google Lens, selected the text, and there's listen. <laughs> All right. I just hard to believe. That's too much fun. It is magical stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're welcome, Bob. Thank you for watching an amazing session. By far <laughs> one of your best. Oh, aren't you nice? Uh, <laughs> well, where are we? We do have review questions. Oh, I went long, didn't I? Yeah. I wasn't, well. I wasn't even watching the clock. This is just such cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, do you have questions? Do you have any answers? True or false? To scan a QR code, you must take a photo. False. You can just point your camera at it. But you can take a photo and scan it later. Okay, squeeze it to stop the ringing means to press what button? The up volume, the down volume, the power, or any button? Any of those three. Every web page has a button to make a QR code. 
find that button where? A, at the right in the address bar, B, under favorites, C, under the three dot menu. A, at the right in the address bar. And I've checked that on both Chrome and Edge and Safari. Safari. So they, they all work there. How many languages can Google Lens translate? Oh, I didn't mention that. It's more than 50. It's absolutely more than 50. <laughs> it's, it's, it's twice 50. They say it has 100 languages. And, and different dialects, too. The purpose of Google Lens is to A, search for similar images, B, sell stuff on Amazon, C, Google the real world. C, it's a way to just Google in the real world. And to use Google Photos or Google Lens on a photo, you need to use A, Google Photos, B, Amazon Photos, C, take the photo with Google Lens. A, Google Photos. All right. So we may be old, <laughs> old dogs, but we can learn new tricks. And she can even teach some of us how to, how to do this stuff. A reminder, the Backstage Pass is going to happen in just a few minutes. If you don't have the link, you can get it from our website. Sign up for our new newsletters, Geeks on Tour News. Members, get the book. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the book. But we'll, we'll put some links in there to that. Become a premium member. Subscribe to the channel. Chris, what's the webpage that lists all of your YouTube shows? Geeksontour.com, and the menu item is YouTube show. And the webpage that lists all of our recent newsletters. Geeksontour.com, and the menu item is blogs and news. Okay, become a member. It's very inexpensive. You get a lot of good benefits. Backstage pass is happening. I'm getting ready to do that now. That's it for us. I'm Jen. I'm Chris. And we are Geeks, Geeks on, on Tour. Tour. See you next week.